Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. How are you doing? Also, where's everybody watching from today? I'm getting set up and we're gonna get going soon. Hello, hello to everyone. I'm excited about today's live. It's going to be, um, I, I did a little preparation, but we're going to kind of be playing around today. So grab whatever paper you want to use, whatever paints you want to use, and just get ready to kind of explore. Uh, we're going to be exploring shapes. Let me know in the comments who wants, who's going to paint today and who just wants to watch and then we'll paint later. So we're going to get started in about two minutes, um, but I'll give you guys a little preview. So yesterday I posted this video of this little puffer fish, which is super fun to do, super cute. But I started by painting kind of up here, and there were a bunch of people who were like, I thought it was going to be a little chicken or a hippo or an octopus. And I, I was thinking about that last night. And I was like, yeah, we could start with these basic shapes and how many different things can we make based on those shapes? So we're going to be exploring how to make a bunch of different things, kind of going off of one basic principle. Yes, this is Larry. I named him Larry because that's what he looks like to me. I also think for Maybe for the puffer fish or for the octopus, I'm going to use some black paper. We're going to paint a bunch of different things today because these don't take a ton of time to do. You're just going to need a brush and some paints. And then if you have a white gel pen or if you have anything that um, even a, just a pencil will work. But I do like to use something white to kind of be able to also add in the different little highlights and things. So acrylic paint would work or white gouache or anything you have that's white, uh, a crayon, a colored pencil. I'm going to actually, I'm going to tape this off into a couple little squares so that we have a bunch where we can actually work off of. And I'm just going to be using uh, very basic masking tape for this. These don't need to be perfect because we're kind of playing with ideas today. So I'm going to put mine into six quadrants because I do have six different little animals here to play with. And then I have my black paper over to the side to do the other one. Um, so maybe, well actually we'll probably start with the puffer fish because I do think it's the boat most basic of all the different shapes and it'll be the easiest to build off of. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go, because if you are, we're going to get started in just a second. I'm going to start by wetting my watercolors so I have access to them. Also, for those anybody who is new around here, my name's Lacey, and we do, every other week, we do a live class together where we just kind of get together and paint, and I explain what I'm doing and help troubleshoot and things like that, and we just have fun together. All right, we got some thumbs up. The good news is with this is if you want to make different color choices, you can absolutely do that in this one because 
the colors aren't going to matter so much because we're painting little cartoon type things. So if you are feeling a different color scheme than me, go for it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get kind of a darkish, purpley kind of color. So let me grab a little tester strip. I'm going to start with a color that's about like this. I guess it's a little more blue. Let's make it a little more purple. And I'm going to do that by mixing in a little more pink. And there we go. Now I've got a little more purple. I did finally post the, the replay last night. I downloaded it earlier in the week and forgot to post it. But uh, two weeks ago, the, the replay is up now if you want to do what we did last week, which was saguaro cactus. All right, so the principle of this is we're going to start by marking out the eyes. And notice that the eyes are, they're not perfect, but they're about the same size. And then you could fit probably two of those little dots in between, two of the little circles in between them. So that's how we're going to space it. So we're going to start by making a little circle right there, or a circle-esque shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then one, two, and then one here. See, we left a little bit of space in between them. Okay? There is my very first little mark on here. Then I'm going to wash my brush, and now I'm going to fill it with a nice bright pink color because I'm going to just try to replicate this one that I did earlier so you guys can see it painted in real time. This one is actually pretty close to real time in what I painted it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make this little kind of smiley face shape, and we're not going to touch into the eyes because they're still wet, and if we touched into them, then it would bleed into there, and I don't want to do that. Maybe I want mine to be a little bit bigger, my smiley face to be a bit bigger. Then I'm going to outline the eyes without touching them, kind of like that. Here's one. Oh, I touched it, so you're going to see <laughs> it's going to bleed in a little bit. It's okay. I'm going to fill in in between. So we have this. So this is the that basic shape that we're going to go off of that... Everybody saw a bunch of different things. I'm going to put a little more water in my brush so it's a little bit lighter down here. And, well, maybe I won't because then you guys can't see it so, so much. So I'm going to put a little more color in my brush. I'm going to bring this out. And we want kind of a little blob shape that's going to pop out a little bit on the sides. For our little puffer fish. Maybe even a little bit more. This is the general shape that we want. Then I'm going to put some even more concentrated pink in my brush, and I'm just going to drop that in because I want to give them a little texture. Everything is still wet, and this will just add a little interest. Make sure my brush is filled with some sort of a color. I'm going to take the edge of it and kind of on the taper, I'm going to go away from the body here push down, and then I'm going to flick and kind of lessen how much pressure I'm using in order to get the little fin. I like that there's a little bit of variation on this. You can always come in and add in little extra bits here if you want to. Do the same thing on this side. Touch, and then lighten as I get closer. I'm going to add in a little bit extra. I'm also going to grab a little additional blue and some purple in order to I'm going to shade kind of around the bottom while this is still wet. I want there to be a little bit of variation and a tiny bit of shading. It is a cartoon, so it doesn't. this doesn't need to be perfect, and it can really look like anything you want it to. I personally like to, to paint the object first before the background because it allows for the object not to fit into the space that I'm going to define it. The, if I do the background first, I either have to draw it out and then carefully go around it, but I tend to not draw a lot of things first. Um, that's just the way I work, but everybody works a little bit different, uh, and then I can just fit the background in around whatever I do end up painting, whereas 
there's a lot more planning that goes into painting the background first. You could either draw it out, paint around it, or you could paint the entire thing, but then that's gonna affect the colors that this is going to be because you'll see those colors through it. So we are gonna um, actually dry this but one of the things I want to do is there's actually a puddle of water here. So what I want to do is I need to grab some paper towels. Because if I try to dry this right now, it's going to blow that around. So I'm just going to dry my brush off. And then I'm going to grab some of that extra water that's right there so it won't blow around. And there we go. All right, so in order for me to make this dry, this is going to be loud for a second. So if you are sensitive to noise, please go ahead and just turn your volume down for about 30 seconds or so while I do dry this. That's gonna happen in three, two, and one. All right, I have my first layer dry, and you might be wondering, why, why did I dry it at that point? And the reason is, I wanna add in a darker circle that's smaller on these eyes, as well as this mouth, and if I had added them at that point when it was still wet, everything would've just bled together, and I wouldn't have these kind of defined edges, which is exactly what I want. We're layering on top of another color. So, in order to do that, I could take that same purple color I had, and it will technically, because we're layering on top of that color, it will get a bit darker, but I want it to be a decent amount darker. So I actually need to work on mixing this color so that it is darker. So I'm gonna grab my colors here. We'll try to keep him kind of in sight, but I don't wanna spill everything. And this is one of the most difficult things, especially for beginners, even not for beginners, is taking a color, this is now the color I have, which is actually a little bit different because I mixed in some other ones, but taking a color like this and making it more saturated because every time you grab, you might be in, um, in, interested in washing your brush off or something, but that's going to eventually kind of also dilute it as you add more color, so we have to be a little bit bolder with this, or we need to, if we do wash our brush off, we do have to then dry it before grabbing more of these colors. So I've added in a little more purple. That's gonna get me a little bit darker, but it's not gonna get me quite as dark as I want it to be. So I'm actually going to mix a custom color, and I'm gonna go in with this blue. I love this blue. And I'm gonna add in some of that. That blue is a nice dark color that is going to help us bump up the saturation. But it's a little bit more blue than what I want. So I'm going to counter that by grabbing a little of this kind of magenta color. And then mixing that in. So that is quite a bit darker, but it's still not quite as dark as I want. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more. Notice I'm not washing my brush. Um, some people, this is going to bother them because I'm touching into this as well. And if you're one of those people, that's fine. You can just wash your brush between, but just dry it off. Otherwise you won't be able to get a darker saturation. We're kind of back towards that blue, so I'm gonna go in here. And if you do get your colors kind of mixed up in between them, it's not that big of a deal. At the end, when we are finished with this, we can always just wash our brush and kind of swirl it around and it'll take off a really small layer, the layer that we contaminated in essence. So this is the color I'm gonna be using for my eyes and those details. All right, this is dry now. So now I'm gonna make these two circles. They're gonna be smaller, but within these. These are like the pupils. I don't actually know if Puff or Fish actually have pupils, but these are little cartoons, so we get to make the rules. So now I've got little pupils, and then I'm also gonna make that little kind of smile area, or his little mouth. Just add that in right there. 
The puffer fish is actually done and painted. Most of the details are going to come from those white gel pens, or if you have something else like a white crayon or something, you can do the same thing with this. Now, if you're worried about adding in the background and touching either one of these eyes that you just added in, you're going to want to give that a dry again. I'm going to avoid doing that and I'm just going to try to be careful and not touch the eyes. So we'll see if that works. But what I want to do is I want to pick my main part for my blue. So let's mix up a blue. Here we go. Notice I have some dried green over here. And in this one, I liked this where it had that variation where there's a little green, a little blue, because I like to have a little variation in my backgrounds personally. If you don't, you don't have to add that in. But what I want to do is start with the blue and then occasionally, instead of dipping into the blue that I mix up, I'll just kind of swirl my brush around over here just to add a little bit of green into my brush. And then it'll kind of all mix on the page. So we're going to need a little bit of water in here. And I'm going to start with this blue. Mix it in, and I'm going to mix in all that dried stuff that was there too, and let's just check it. That's a fairly good starting point for this, so I'm actually going to, I'm going to add in just a little bit more. There we go, just a little more saturated. So remember, I'm going to be occasionally just kind of swiping over here to add a little bit of green into my brush, which will kind of turn into kind of a greenish blue on the page because my brush is mainly filled with this blue color. So the way I'm going to work around this is I'm just going to kind of touch around, being a little careful. At this point, now I'm going to swirl around on that green to change that color a little bit. I'm going to be careful not to touch there. See how we got a little change in that color there? I'm going to do the same thing down here. Then I'm going to dip back in to that blue. More in that blue. And if you want, you want you can be a little more careful about how wet you make this if you want it to be more even. I don't mind a little variation in this because water, it does usually have a little bit of variation within it. And one of the things you can do for yourself if you are a beginner is pick subjects where there's going to be some forgiveness within the subject. So something like painting a watery background, people don't expect it to be perfectly flat. And that will actually kind of help you in the long run. All right, I have colored around him. <laughs> We're talking about the stingray. I have not kept up very much with that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dry this so that I can add in the pen details so that we can see. And then what we'll probably do for the other ones is paint one or two of the base parts of it so that we don't have to constantly dry every like, you know, minute and a half. But again, if you are sensitive to loud noises or you got a sleeping baby or something, you might want to turn your volume down for about 20 or 30 seconds in three, two, one. There we go. Now what we're going to do is the reason I dried that is when we're adding mixed media, we typically want to work on a dry layer. Not always, but it's usually a good idea, especially for something like this, where the water could get in, kind of clog that up as well as it's just going to adhere better. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to outline basically everything we did and add in little spikes. So 
So I'm gonna start with just kind of defining those eyes. I want mine to be big, so I'm just gonna outline them and actually go a little bit into that blue. And I'm gonna go with a couple different outlines so that they don't have to be perfect. The main key here that's gonna really bring this to life is those little highlights in the eye though. I mean, look how much cuter that is just with those two little marks. Every little extra that we add just seems to bring it to life a little bit more. He's he's real spiky today, so I'm just going to go, I'm going to outline him kind of like this. <laughs> the other one I outlined a little bit smoother, but we're going to experiment with outlining him a little more like that. And then we're gonna add in those little spikes. Now your spikes could just be lines. I'm gonna make mine little Vs. And I'm gonna kind of try to go around in general the shape that he is. See how I'm kind of changing the direction of those Vs as I move around. It doesn't need to be that perfect, but you, but you can make it like that. You, know, you could do them whatever direction you want. Let's add some bigger spikes to him. I just think I just think he's so cute. Yeah, the pen I'm using is Uni Uniball Signo. And yeah, these are I think the the special Japan ones, they are incredible. It is the best gel pen. I also have it in um, silver and the gold. I bought it because I wanted this one, but I could only find a pack that had all three in it. And I mean, they just, they cover so well. Like, are you kidding me? Look at that. And the gold is really pretty too. I actually, I, I saw the TikTok I saw that had these, had the gold and the gold is really pretty. But the white, the white is the standout for me, man. It is incredible. And it's super useful in watercolor. Because the other options we have in watercolor to get that kind of white stuff is a lot of prior planning, which can have really big payoff if you are to mask off those areas or be really careful about maintaining that white space. But sometimes we just want to like do something a little fun. And you know what? An hour and a half of planning does can kind of get in the way of just fun, free-flowing joy. <laughs> so the brand I'm using is my own personal set that I'm using. Um, and it's also got the pink in there is, is, is one of my handmade colors. <laughs> so, all right. So we know how to do the basic one. That is the most basic of these shapes. So let's see how we can transform that initial idea into something a little bit different. And I have a little idea for this one. I don't know if this is gonna work, but you know how little baby chickens also look at his eyes, they look real crazy. I was sketching this at like 11 o'clock at night last night because this idea came to me. Um, <laughs> but you know how little baby chickens, their, their little bodies are just basically little balls of fluff. So I actually think I wanna start by trying to start wet and actually paint the body first with a bunch of yellow so that it's just real soft and fluffy. Then we'll dry it and then we'll add in the head on top of it. I don't know if it's gonna work, but today is all about experimenting and seeing what we can do with that beginning top shape. How all of these things have kind of that same type of beginning and yet they have very different results, but they're all kind of stylistically the same. So the white areas, yeah, you, you either have to mask them off or you have to be really careful or you could use something like a wax resist. But a lot of the times when I'm painting, um, I would say there are, there are different types of painters. There are those who are very methodical. I'm more a go with the flow and see what happens um, and then kind of adapt to what's happening. And so that's why something like this works really well for me because, you know, if I go outside the lines, I can just make my 
fish a little bit bigger or I can kind of modify it and then these will I'll be able to fit them to whatever happened in the previous steps but some people are gonna be more comfortable in actually kind of pre-planning everything out so what I'm gonna do for this little baby chicken is I'm gonna wet the entire page I'm gonna find my little wash brush just to make this a little bit faster and my water is already pretty dirty so we're just gonna put some water here and I'm going to spread it out because I want this to be nice and wet. And just smooth this down so it's evenly wet. And then I'm going to, I've got my yellow here. I don't know if this part's going to work, but we're going to experiment. And I'm just going to grab some of these yellows and let's just kind of drop them in here. I'm just dropping in a bunch of different yellows. This is his little little fluffy body. And maybe we even hint to where his little feet would be. Right there. We'll drop a little brown towards the bottom to kind of add in a little bit of shadow. Whoop. Oh no. I got a little bit too much. That's okay. We're going with it. There, there's his little fluff ball. <laughs> I know this just looks like not much of anything, and that's kind of the point for right now. Um, because I, w I just want his body to be a little, little fluff ball, and I want it to take advantage of the wet paint. But I am going to try to dry this to stop it spreading too much more. So I'm going to kind of force it. There's a quite a bit of water. So my tactic is going to be using this on low and kind of moving in multiple directions. Again, if you're sensitive to noise, go ahead and turn that volume down in about three, two, and one. <laughs> Okay, that went both kind of according to plan and not according to plan. It, it's, it looks a little goofy, um, but we're going to try to go with it because I, I can see some potential here. For example, notice how this one's a little bit smaller and that one's a little bigger and then it also kind of comes out to this side. So maybe that's its little tail sticking out. So maybe its head is a little over to this side just a bit. Maybe he's sticking his little booty out over here. We're just going to kind of go with it. That's this is again kind of how I like to work. It doesn't always work out, but I like, since watercolor is such an unpredictable medium, I mean, you can figure out different things about it, but it is fairly unpredictable. So being able to kind of modify and adjust as we go is super helpful. All right, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to go in with some of this black here. I'm just going to mix it into whatever is in here because I want that black to kind of overpower that anyways, and that's fine. Let's just check. There we go. Yeah, I want a nice gray, because I think I'll, I'll come in with both of those um, circles again. So again, I'm going to start with one of my little circles. So I'm going to move up about here. This is, I think, about where I want his his head to be. And then one, two away, and then here's that second one. And then I don't have any free space here, which is which is fine because I want to work with pretty concentrated colors. So I'm going to wash my brush, and I'm just going to go straight from the pan to make these the shape of the head. 
it's going to start basically the same again where we're going to go around the eyes trying not to touch really trying not to touch on this because I don't want the the purple into the pink isn't so bad but the black might not be great give him the little cap and you know what he might have a little he's got a little fluff on his head so I'm going to add that in I'm going to bring that down connecting these and again go out and I'm trying to work pretty concentrated here but we are probably going to need to do some shadowing to help bring it out from the body so let's actually do a couple things here the first is I'm going to take a dry brush and let's actually lift a little bit out from the center here so that this looks like it's sticking out a little bit more and then I'm going to put a little bit of that brown in my brush and let's go kind of underneath while things are still wet to kind of shadow it a little bit and things are actually dry <laughs> drying I didn't work super wet so I'm going to put a little more yellow in my brush and kind of soften them together maybe even put a little bit here to kind of shadow and shade <laughs> This one, his eyes are already pretty wonky, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, we're going to dry this because I need to add in some additional layers here. Um, and and we, we're going to see if I can save him. I'm a little bit worried about this one, but we've, we're experimenting. So I'm going to turn this on in three, two, and one. So one thing that I, I've been meaning to make a video on um, that I have not had time yet is to talk about making it dry is super helpful because waiting for something like that to dry can take 20 or 30 minutes. But um, when we do go straight onto that after we dried, the paper is going to want to dry even faster. So sometimes you want to let this kind of return to room temperature, which takes a minute or so. Uh, it still saves you a bunch of time compared to waiting for every single layer to dry, but you can also kind of work around it. But that is one of the risks of that making it dry, as well as it can get really hot. I don't know if you noticed, but the glue here kind of melted down. Um, so that's why I'm always moving it because I don't want one single point on the page to get too hot. All right, so then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make two more circles in those. This is I've got that black on my brush to give him his little pupils. So what we're doing today, somebody asked what we were doing, and today we are taking this very basic starting shape and seeing how many different things we can paint using the very um, beginning part and just how we can modify things. One of the best things you can do for yourself is when you're learning to draw and things like that is to be able to identify these different shapes. Um, and so that's kind of what we're doing is saying like, hey, look, do you see these shapes? They actually are kind of similar across a bunch of different things. I'm putting some orange in my brush and then we're gonna make the little beak shape, which is going to be kind of a diamond shape and we'll add in those details again with that gel pen. So there's this little thing. I have hopes that this will get better. We'll see. And then I'm, I'm gonna, let's hint to maybe a little bit more detail on his little feet down here. And then to kind of stay with the other thing, I don't know if I'm gonna add a background to this because I don't know about his little fluffy body. Should I add a background or should I just go with the white gel pen? What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, we got Moogie again. Hello. All right, you guys want a background. I'm going to go with a purpley background because I think that that will look nice with the yellow. All right, so 
we're gonna try it. Um, we're, I'm also gonna try to maybe take advantage of being able to reshape some of the fluff. I don't know. I feel like it could look cute without the background, but you guys have voted. All right, so I'm gonna add in purple. And I'm just gonna kinda go around this. Probably dip into a little bit of blue every once in a while just to get, again, a little variation. Building in that variation will make this more forgiving for us. And I'm not working quite wet enough because I haven't mixed up a ton of color in order for this to be nice and smooth, but you know, that's not quite the premise we're, we're working on today. For his little fluff, I'm just gonna make that kind of rough around the edges. So yeah, for a smoother background, I would want my brush to have a lot more color in here. But I would rather be able to paint a bunch of these different ones than really focus on the backgrounds. They're kind of ancillary. They will help the white gel pen pop out a little bit more. Um, but yeah. All right, so we need to dry this in order to add the pen details. And we're gonna do that in three, two, and one. <laughs> All right, time for those pen details. Again, I'm gonna start by just kind of outlining these real messily. I think I'm actually gonna outline the inner parts too. I don't know why, but I feel like they need it. And then give the little highlights. And instantly, that, the highlights always do it for me. I'm gonna give make sure his little fluff is up here too. I should have gotten a little closer over here, but that's okay. Give him his little beak. And they usually have those little nostril slits. And then we'll give him a little fluff on his cheeks too. All right, he is, he is getting cuter. We're making him fluffy. This is his little wing I've decided and his little fluffy body, and then we'll outline his little feet. Oop, I gave him an extra toe. Whoops. <laughs> All right, he is pretty cute. He's pretty cute. What do you think we should name this one? <laughs> Gus, <laughs> Ricardo, ooh. Flick, Fluffy Pete, oh my gosh, there's too many good suggestions. How am I gonna choose? <laughs> I kinda like Gus too. All right, he's Gus. I'm gonna label him so, so we don't forget. All right, let's do another one. I'm trying to do, I'm gonna do a time check because I also wanna do this on black paper for one of them. So you guys can vote because we're gonna do one more and then I'll do one on black paper. See, these were all my ideas of starting with that basic shape because that's what we're exploring today is starting with a basic shape and being able to expand and throw on additional shapes. So um, the octopus, I think I'm gonna try to do on the black paper. I'm worried about the octopus because of all those legs, but I'm hoping that the brush will do some of the work for me. Um, so vote between, I don't love the this one either. Let's vote between these ones. We've got a dog, we've got a hippo, and we've got a cow. So maybe even put the uh, the emoji in the comments. Oh, we got a lot for the hippo. <laughs> okay, it's hippo. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the changes here. So we're going to start the same way with those eyes and that cap. And then this is basically the same, except for we'll probably do this in a second layer. So we'll probably do this this and then this area maybe add in the little ears and then we'll add this as another layer actually oh you know what we'll do okay here's 
here's what I got to do is kind of try to figure out how to simplify this. So we start with the eyes and then we're going to do this shape, but it's going to go out and it's going to be his whole body. Then what we'll do is dry it and then we'll add in this and his little feet. Okay. All right. What color should our hippo be? Should he be gray so we can do fun background or should we do fun colors on the hippo and then we'll figure out if we're going to do a background. <laughs> Whoops. I'm just going to kick my trash can a bit. Blue gray. Let's go with blue gray. There's quite a few gray suggestions in there. So let's go ahead and do that. It will allow us to do another kind of nice blue or purpley background, which can be kind of fun. So, all right, I'm going to start. Let's, I, let's give him those purple eyes again. So I think I need to mix this up just a bit more. And my colors are getting a bit dry, so I probably need to give him another spritz. Because we've been working for a while. All right, here is my first color I'm going to use for the eyes. So we're going to start with those eyes. Oh, I'm hoping I don't have this. Okay, his body's going to be real squat based on where I put this eyeball. My phone just made a weird noise. I don't know what that means. All right, here's an eye and then about two apart. That's maybe almost three apart. That's okay. He's a hippo, so he's a little bit different. <laughs> Whoops. And I went out of the lines a bit. So I'm just gonna kind of try to make them about the same. They don't need to be perfect. And then we're gonna work on kind of a blue gray. So I already have that kind of black down here, but I'm gonna add in, or it's kind of a gray, I'm gonna add in a little bit of that blue to give him more of a blue gray. Okay. Again, we're gonna start the same where we kind of outline these guys. Try to get a little bit closer, but not too close. Then we're going to bring that up into the kind of that smiley face shape. And fill in between. Yeah, see, this is that point where everybody was like, I thought it was going to be, because at this point it could be an elephant. It could be all sorts of things. And then we want his body to be nice and round. And you know what? I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom of the page because I kind of feel like we might not even be able to fit his feet in if we want him to be really round. <laughs> Let's bring him here. We'll see. Oh, he could be an owl almost or a little, a little, uh, he could be all sorts of things right now. <laughs> We're going to go, we're going to go with it. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that black into my brush and just kind of, let's make some different lines in here. I'm trying not to do anything like too, but they have this interesting skin texture. So let's just, let's try to add a little variation just to, just to make it a little more interesting. I don't know. We're playing around. We're experimenting. <laughs> or, or it kind of looks like a, is that Totoro? I actually, I haven't seen that, but I've seen that character a whole bunch. It could be a seal, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to dry this so we can do another layer on. So it's going to happen in three, two, and one.
All right, that's dry. I'm gonna make my um, purple a little bit darker. And I love, see, what I absolutely love is I'm seeing all sorts of people say different things. And I guess that's exactly what I'm hoping to do today is show you that, yeah, you can take one of these little ideas that I share and who knows what it could spark for you. It might, you might do something similar and then you might think, hey, hold on, what about? And I think that's just absolutely beautiful that we can all start with something in mind but see different things. I'm just darkening this a bit. Let's just double check that it's darker. Yeah, I have manta ray for sure. See, that is not darker. That's why I always have little tester strips because sometimes what my eyes see is not what the paper is going to read. There we go. That's going to be darker. I probably should have done that first one a little bit lighter, but that's okay. I'm going to add in that second layer here, a little, the iris, I suppose. And then I'm going to darken my gray color just a bit. Let's double check it because then we're going to add in that mouth. That'll be a little bit darker. So the mouth is going to touch up to the bottom of these. Make sure you're not touching the wet too much. And then it's just kind of a big oval shape. I should have added, oh, I should have added the ears in. That would have helped us a lot because we're definitely missing the ears. <laughs> this guy is funny looking, oh my gosh. All right, so let's try to add in these ears. And I wonder if I can just do them like that where I'm just gonna touch my brush and then just kind of push into the belly a bit. I'm gonna fill these in a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> He's funny looking. Is he a hippo or is he a rhino? <laughs> uh, and then let's let's hint to his little feet in the front, I guess. I'm just gonna hint to him. I don't know. Maybe he needs a little tail. <laughs> a pig would have been super cute with this too. All right. Um, for this one. Let's go ahead and dry this and let's add in the background so I can add in the pen details to see if I'm going to be able to pull this one <laughs> around. <laughs> All right, so again, we're going to dry this in three, two, and one. All right, we're gonna add in a background and he absolutely needs nostrils. They are definitely on the plan, but I think I'm gonna add him in with the white pen. Hopefully that will help because he is, he is a, he's one goofy dude right now. Or lady, I don't know. We'll find out once we finish, once we finish it, we'll have to name this one too. This might, this might be a lady. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do like a purpley blue background. I don't know why, but I'm already getting Frida vibes. You guys will have to tell me if you, if you think she's a Frida at the end of this. All right. So I'm going to fill in this background again. I'm not being super careful. This is an experimental day. We're just, we're having fun, you know, not everything is that serious. And today, we're just playing. <laughs> I'm going to turn my page. The other little tip for backgrounds, I haven't been doing this, um, but the other tip for backgrounds is, you know, your hands want to move in a direction and you have more control in certain directions that you move your brush. So move your paper so that you make it easier on yourself, you know? Okay, 
There we go, we got a background in. I gotta dry it one more time and we'll add in those pin details and hopefully it will come to life. <laughs> That's gonna happen in three, two, and one. I look through the comments. You guys have got some great. I love I love Beshti. <laughs> I also I also liked uh what was the other really like? Henrietta. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna add in these details. So for this one, I'm gonna do his main ear here, and then you know they have to attach. So we're gonna do that. Ooh. Add these in. I'm kind of doing them like little scribbles because it's gonna be more forgiving if I kind of scribble. <laughs> I don't know why this one is just so funny to me. It doesn't quite look like my sketch, but hopefully with, oops, I guess his nose goes over his eye, so let's just color that in a bit. And then, or her, once we add in those nostrils, yep, that is what kind of brought it to life. Bring in those feet, and maybe I feel like part of the body. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure it looks like a hippo, but it looks like something cute. Should we do, okay, eyelashes. Let's do eyelashes. Oh yeah, now it's definitely, okay, I think I, think I am getting Henrietta vibes. What do you guys think? Henrietta? Is it Henrietta or is it Frida? <laughs> oh, I could see Harriet too. All right, I think we're gonna go with Henrietta. Yeah, this does kind of remind me of like a pit bull, the little velvet hippo. <laughs> Henrietta. <laughs> I love her. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna try to do the octopus. Um, we will see how the octopus goes, but I wanna try to do it on black paper. So I'm gonna use, I've got um, a set of watercolors that it has a little more coverage, so I'll actually be able to see it, but I just feel like it might look really neat on black paper. I, I don't know that for sure, but again, we're experimenting today. Oh, the, well, the fish is, that's Larry. Um, well, or this one was Larry. This is the one I showed you guys yesterday and we named him Larry, but, and that, maybe that's his cousin. So I guess let's name this one then. If this one's Larry, I'll give him his little name here. Then what's his cousin's name or brother? I like Mo. I like Mo. <laughs> okay, so let me grab this other set of watercolors. And we're gonna try to do the this is this is actually a limited set that I just made. These are handmade. And I made them so they'd be more have more coverage to work on black paper. So I'm thinking I'm going to do the octopus in kind of pinks and yellows and oranges. And we'll see how well that works. I'm going to need something to kind of mix up the colors on. My desk is a mess off screen. That's okay. All right, I've got this. Uh, 
Um, this is, so this is Stonehenge. It's the aqua cold press, so it's specifically made for watercolor, but not all watercolors, I mean, watercolors will kind of show up on it, um, but a lot of them are really transparent. So you do want something that's going to have a little more opacity to it, just to be a little bit more of a standout. I really do like this paper. I've tried a bunch of different black papers and they all work fairly well. Um, but this is the first one I tried that I was like, oh yeah, this is made for watercolor, like for real, not just like I can make watercolor work on it, you know? <laughs> Please do lives all Yeah, I do them every other week. Um, uh, I used to do them every week, but it just, it wasn't super sustainable for me to do them every single week. Um... Because I do try to come up with like a fun new idea or really think through something. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I really like hanging out with you guys, but it is, it is fun. But I do have to sometimes do my other stuff. Uh, all right. Anyways, here I'm going to take a little bit of this purpley color. And I'm going to start with those eyeballs. I'm kind of, I want to go for like a, this direction of thing. I, I don't know how this is going to work. We're going to, I do also do a monthly live for my patrons where we do, but it's like on a Google meet so that people can ask questions and I can see what you're working on and stuff. It's pretty cool. Our next one will be next, next weekend or the weekend after. I can't remember. We haven't officially picked the time, but there we go. I've got that. Now I'm going to grab some of these. Let's start with this color. We could also make them into a squid if we made them into a, a pointy head, but I, I don't think I'm going to go with a rounder head. I'm going to start by kind of outlining these. Maybe get a little bit closer, a little bit braver. And then we're going to go in and out. And there we go. Let's add in a little bit of, let's add in a little water so we can get this to kind of flow around. And let's add in some of this pink just to transition a little bit. Okay, now we got to figure out how to make the eight legs. All right, so I'm gonna bring one down and where's one? <laughs> Maybe there's another one that comes out over here. Sure, there's two. I'm gonna put some of that yellow into my brush. I need a little more water in my brush in general to get this to flow. There's three. Let's go into that orange. Also, I'm going to drop this in while this is still wet up here to give them a little variation. Okay, three, four. And let's go back to the pink. Let's do one more leg in the front and then we'll hint to the other ones. Oh, I guess this one's coming out this way. Woo, five. And there's six, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> For a second I was like, I don't know. Did I did I get the right number? Uh, let's do one in here. Seven. And then let's have this other one come. I wish I'd kind of made them all go in this direction, but it's a little bit late for that now. Mm. It's coming from the background. There we go. I probably should have done this one as yellow and then that one as pink so that it went behind a little bit. Let's put a little purple there. I don't know. It's not it's not perfect, but it is fun. All right, let's drop in some of these colors into some of these. I want variation. I want fun. And then, oh, you know what I'm going to do is let's add in some little suckers to some of these. 
the hint of some of the little suckers. So those ones would be on the back. We wouldn't be able to see this one. Maybe on this one it comes here, so then we can see a little bit of the suckers on that one. We won't see it on that one. We definitely see it on this one. And maybe this one, it flips, and then we can see it here. There. That's not perfect, but we're going to add in those pen details after we do. Uh, do we think we need, I don't I actually think we might just be able to add in some pen details. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm torn between adding in some more color or the background or something and just trying to go with the pen details. Maybe the black in itself. I think I'm just going to leave it because I feel like we can do a lot of the work with the white pen. Is there a, a way to add? Yes, there's. you can do so many different things. Um, I've got... My favorite way is this white gel pen currently. However, let's see. I mean, I have a metallic marker that you, that could technically be used. Oh, let's see if we can see it. That could look cool. Um, you could use a metallic Sharpie. You could use a white crayon. I don't know if I have any of that else kind of on hand. I don't know if you guys are able to join again. It ended and said my live was inactive. <laughs> so I'm, there we go. We're, we're back, we're back. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I've, I've been active. I've been doing stuff. Maybe it was a sound before, maybe, but that was a long time ago. Weird. All right, I'm going to dry this and then we're going to add those pen details in now. So, sensitive to noises, three, two, and one. Moogie's got a lot to say upstairs. Can you guys even hear me? Is is it looping? What's going on? Do you guys know if it is everything working? I want to add. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, good. Because so I want to add in these details, but uh, if if it's not working good, then I don't want to do it that way. All right, so we're gonna come out with the pen details. So let's. And just outline. We're going to do our little outline. Oh, that was not what I meant to outline. I actually meant to outline this part. So I guess I need to outline this one now too. <laughs> the highlights always get me. All right, we're going to outline, outline, outline. I'm also going to do a little, like, a couple of these, because they usually kind of have a little bit of a, kind of a texture there. And then I decided that that one's in the back. So I'll go in front here. And then this one. But this one we have these little suckers right there I think they've got like two I'm doing this from memory I have not looked at an octopus for quite a while 
but I think they have like two? Maybe they only have one? I don't know. Our octopus has two sets, and so like on some of these, it's only slightly twisted, so we're only seeing one. Like on this one, we're only seeing one side of the suckers. On this one, we're not seeing any because it's facing towards the back. This one, it's twisting in this direction, so we're going to see them here. And one side, you don't have to add in the suckers. If you're like, mm, that is too much for me, that's fine. Just add in the legs and just outline them. I feel like we're having a staring contest. Yeah, I could totally see that. This one was supposed to come from the back. I wish that I'd made this leg kind of go here. So we're just going to, I'm just going to edit that in real time. I'm going to start with one and then that's going to have two for a bit. And then let's go back to one. And this one we would see both. And then I kind of want to do that thing I did with the koi fish when we did the black, where we kind of added in the lines around it, or should we leave it as is? We can also give them some little, sometimes they have these little like spots. Give them freckles. I, I suppose that's what they are. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna kind of, what I did the last time when we were doing that that I ended up liking was I just kind of drug, oh, my, my pen is a little bit, there we go. I just kind of drug it in between the shapes to kind of make it, I don't know, just to give it a little more texture and like the water is kind of moving around this object. There's little, like, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but like little pockets of water kind of moving around him. If you're like, mm, nope, I'm out. That's not for me. That's totally fine. This is all about experimenting. At least it is for me. If something seems fun, you should try it. If you're like, no, do it. <laughs> you don't want to do... I, yeah, I have to go after this and, and do some cleaning and stuff, but maybe I will be able to come back to this later. Because this is fun. All right, what do we name? What do we name? I don't know why, but this one. I don't know. What's its name? What's the that we need to name the uh, the octopus? <laughs> Waltzer, Octavia, Ollie. I do like Ollie. Waltzer, Octavia, Ollie. I do like Ollie. The paper is Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Black. I 
two also kind of like Dave. My my top two favorites are Ollie and Dave. <laughs> bright creatures but I do I have seen some of the stuff about them and I think octopus are really really neat very smart all right this one's Ollie this is what we worked on today I love all of our little creatures we made today look at all the fun things we painted today together um, I really hope that you guys had fun painting. I had a ton of fun painting today. Um, I don't know, maybe some of these will turn into little tutorials at a later time. We already have this one. This one's already up as a tutorial. But these were really fun to do, and I hope that everybody had a fun time. I hope you have a fun day, and I really appreciate you spending some time with me today and kind of coming out. Also, please, if you guys... I had some other ideas that we didn't get to, or and you guys had a ton of ideas, like the seal. Somebody's got to do Neil the Seal in this style. But if you guys take that same principle, try it. Try it with some of your own ideas, that principle of starting with this little shape, and how can you modify it a little bit to change it into something just a bit different, or a lot different. Thank you everyone for joining and I'm going to sign off before it kicks us off again for some unknown reason. If this does save, I will upload the two parts of this to YouTube. I'm a little worried that it won't, but if it does, I will. So if you miss the first part, you won't miss everything as long as I don't have technical issues. All right. Have a wonderful day.